Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So this time around, New Nation is taking on DSVG, another very good Masters level alliance that is pretty much as far as I'm aware, uh, squeaky clean. I do have several of my friends playing in that alliance as well. And it's always, you know, a good match in between both of us because they are a very, very capable team. And this time specifically, this is War 5, I'm a bit late uploading it, but <laughs> promise you I have quite good reason because... Uh, on Saturday, for the first time in a while, I actually went out to have a bit of fun, had some few drinks, and I told my alliance uh, and battle group planners that that's going to be the case. They did not assign me any fights that I needed to do in the first evening, because obviously, you know, that wouldn't be for the best, but also, at the same time, they did assign me quite few fights and a few interesting fights uh, for the next day. And... Effectively, the story is that I woke up the next morning and, you know, I was somewhat slightly hangover, so that was all within the calculations. I actually tried my best to, you know, how moderate night didn't overdo it. And as I was recovering from hangover, I finally started feeling hungry and I ordered some takeaway. And uh, that takeaway did a number on me and I got some food poisoning and <laughs> effectively... Right after that, uh, everything came out. I spent the entire night in the bathroom uh, hugging the um, porcelain and, uh, you know, effectively finding myself back there over a dozen times every half an hour or so at night. And it was a very, very grueling experience. But you need to find the silver linings in things. And the silver lining in this case is the fact that I somehow managed to sneak in all of my fights in that limited window of just being about well enough and awake enough and not, you know, uh, suffering from hangover to just before food poisoning got a better hold of me. And uh, therefore, I actually had a relatively normal war. Everything before and afterwards, obviously, I was in absolutely no shape to play this game at all. But again, silver linings do exist, and uh, I somehow did manage to squeeze in all of these fights. Um, just kind of like in between those uh, critical, critical moments. Right, let's move on. So this war, I'm going to be using Galen, Diablo, and Red Skull. Red Skull is there only for Diablo synergy, making Diablo's poisons passive. And making Diablo's poison passive... It actually does more than people realize. It enables him to take on debuff shruggers. It enables to, for Diablo to take uh, ebb and flow nodes, conflictors, and stuff like that. So the fact that you can make his poisons passive is actually really, really useful. And uh, we have been using it a lot this season. So let's get to it. Even though the war is, you know, at the finishing stages, obviously I do have quite few fights to do. This first one is going to be Silver Surfer. To be honest, I could have actually not brought in Galen, uh, but used uh, Diablo for all of my fights instead. Uh, and then I could have given myself some Odin pre-fights or something. But uh, I figured it would be better if I bring in a second champion, because I do kind of expect myself to get smacked here and there, and that perhaps would uh, let me off slightly cheaper because I would not need to heal up after every single fight. And here the base idea is, you know, very simple. Uh, Galen's immune to power drain, so he's just a nuke for this entire lane, and especially now that Solar Surfer has those passive armor ups. Only thing I need to do, well, those passive armor ups are actually, you know, feeding Galen's planetary mass, so I want it to be safe rather than sorry. And I'm going to ramp up my Galen, I think, to pretty much the maximum amount uh, before I actually enter Harvest. So at this point, I'm at 640. The two level ones here is more than needed, to be honest. I would have, I could have done it with just like the one ramp up level one and then go for Harvest. But uh, it's fine. I dropped two level ones. At this point, I'm at 700, 800 planetary mass, which is going to be overkill. Go for my level one. And here we can see that Silver Surfer is 55% well, health, but... 200k explosion completely nukes down this is also i think first war in a quite while i get to use gallon now the next fights are more interesting and this was one of the urgent things actually going up against j wills korg and uh that korg is a bit dodgy <laughs> we were momentarily thinking of whether to take that korg down after the boss and it probably would have been for the best to be honest <laughs> that would have been the smarter thing to do for sure However, however, you know, um, 
again, I was uh, not feeling the best, and I knew that, uh, you know, I, I'd rather play while I can, but here I screw up the start of the fight, and I lose all of my indestructible boost, and that obviously makes this fight significantly more dodgy, because uh, as I'm going to be getting rid of Korg's Flourish buffs and anything else, and here I miss away that level 1 as well, which kind of pissed me off, and here's another level 1, which, you know, I do get in fine, but I, I know that I just need to get to level 3, that's all I need to do, just get to level 3, you can use power things to survive this, it's fine, passive poisons are doing some damage in the background, even though I only have 2 up there, but again, just need to get to that level 3, and there will be a whoopsie moment somewhere along the line. So here we can see that I do have one power thing on me. And here Corgi Boy is randomly going to get to level 3. <laughs> that was the Conflictor. Conflictor plus Flourish. That's why Korg got to level 3. Accidentally did trigger Conflictor. Luckily, obviously, uh, Diablo does have damage reduction. And here Korg is starting to wail on me. And I have two power things on me. Now, I do know that those power things will not kill me, but this fight definitely has gone far from perfect. And at this point somewhere, I wish that I would have waited for the boss to go down. But at the same time, as long as I survive this, and I do, uh, everything's fine. Korg has the whole bunch of poisons active on him, and I can get in a little bit more healing before he drops dead. But as with pretty much every Diablo fight, when you drop that level 3, it's just done. It's just done, and that's all there is to it. Next, I need to take on Munash's uh, Rintra, and it's obviously a rank 4 Rintra, and this is again one of those fights where Diablo can do this so well because of the passive poison. So it is ebb and flow intercept, but for most part, you know, I'm not going to be really paying attention to the whole intercept thing until I just about want to drop my level 3. Everything else in this fight is kind of like relatively irrelevant, sadist, I'm not applying debuffs on Rintra, those are passives, so this is another node that nodes be my poisons being passives completely switch off. But the point is I'm just want to play I just want to play it safe and parry heavy a lot, build up to my level three and watch that Rintra melt. And yes, Diablo's poisons do have enough reach to pretty much noob down uh, whatever whatever health Rintra will have remaining by the time I get to level three. And meanwhile obviously Diablo doesn't have any buffs. Uh, it's quite easy playstyle there as well can see that even through the protection of ebb and flow, and I could disable that protection at any given point as well, there is no downside to disabling the protection because my poisons are passives, so they would not get uh, shrugged off when the protection would come back on, but at the same time I'm just kind of playing it super cautiously, uh, there's nothing, you know, too stressful about this fight, I'm just parrying, having, he's already lost a third of his health, he's losing more, I'm gonna drop in another party heavy. Now I have reached a level 3, so what I ideally want to do is get in one intercept, and I do just now. Perfect. I have that 40% fury. I'm gonna drop my level 3. Rintra has 56% health remaining here, and just watch what happens to that Rintra. That level 3 actually does a decent amount of damage here too, and he has 15 poisons that are ticking for like 6,000 some per tick, he's throwing his level 1, and basically by the end of it, he's just immediately KO'd. And now this next fight is going to be Infamous Iron Man. And kind of strangely, this uh, Vibranium X uh, guy had placed with recoil on. I do suspect that they specifically managed around it, just to make some of those defenders so much more dangerous, because they were on like Ebon uh, Flow nodes, and basically nodes where uh, the poison and bleed debuffs don't really come into play, if at all. It's just that if you do make a mistake, then it is going to hurt significantly more. And I could have done this fight with Diablo as well, but since I do have Galen, and Galen is obviously well suited for this type of matchup as well, absolutely nothing wrong uh, with using Galen here. And again, here the key aspect is you just want to make sure that you definitely, definitely ramp up enough for your harvest to nuke down the infamous Iron Man, because if you miscalculate it and leave him at like 5% health, then his region kicks in, unless he's obviously fate sealed or neutralized. But in general, when you fight 
infamous Iron Man, you do not want to trigger that region, and then basically you need to do everything all over again. Even though, again, in this matchup, it wouldn't have been as bad, because you do have the neutralizes and stuff like that, that would prevent it. But here we can see that I built up to 940 harvest, and I did get my intercept as well, even uh, though I'm not sure that I had to get in that intercept, but I just did it to be safe. And then we still have more, and all of these fights, again, just as a reminder, I am doing, you know, at a dodgy condition, to call it the best, but we do have here Sasquatch on Ebonflow Intercept, on Mighty Charge, and Crumbling Armor. And again, only reason Diablo can do this fight is because of the poisons are passive. Because obviously, Ebonflow Intercept would always purify my poisons, um, and then, uh, sorry, Mighty Charge would always keep purifying my poisons, and then we have Evan Flow Intercept that also would be purifying my poisons. And uh, this can be quite a dodgy fight. Sasquatch is quite popular placement on these Evan Flow nodes. And that is because his protection stacks up with his innate damage mitigation abilities. And as soon as uh, he gets to like six charges, you basically deal no damage unless you switch off Evan Flow. Uh, because, yeah, that protection stacks up. And if the Evan Flow protection is active, and uh, if he has like six plus charges you can't deal any damage to sasquatch at all but again um i do get in my intercept i drop that heavy attack and this sasquatch has absolutely melted which is kind of funny because i have seen people nearly time out on this fight or the previous fight that i was doing and this fight in general here for me will last uh as we're gonna see minute and a bit so basically as soon as i drop that uh level 3 that Sasquatch started melting, even though he had not entered Wrath of Tanarak. So that was that poison damage was still dealing like half of what it could be had he entered Wrath of Tanarak. So that was a very, very nice 34 hits, 101 minute and 8 seconds. And then moving on, I still have one more mini boss. And uh, with that, this is the Vision Arcus, and I will make a slight slip up here, but obviously Diablo is a very, very good counter. I'm not even going to apply the arm on break immunity pre-fight here or anything uh, because I typically don't like using Diablo's pre-fights unless I absolutely must and the reason for that is um, it extends the fights it reduces your poison damage it reduces your attack and basically just yeah stretches out the fights and here I do nullify all his abilities but I am holding block and I obviously want to push Arcus to level 3, but after my combo, he just immediately threw a level 2, so that hurt a bit. But I had no armor breaks on me and stuff like that, so it wasn't the worst thing. So at this point, I'm just going to build up to level 3. I am keeping him neutralized, so he can't get his power gains back up. And with no power gain buffs, there is no armor break to worry about. With no armor break, there's no cold snap. And the fight is... Done, basically i had four poisons active on him there again he has no none of his power gains and here this level three obviously is going to be an absolute overkill because of all the poisons that we're going to apply here we have 18 poisons on him and you can see him just absolutely melt there with 7k plus damage and that's it another war where diablo absolutely beasts through it all and uh, it was a fairly solid war for uh, New Nation in general. Obviously, the only danger of us losing this war was uh, uh, only danger of us losing this war was if I just passed out somewhere and I didn't finish my fights. But luckily, luckily that did not happen. Again, as I said, we managed to squeeze those fights right at the correct moment. And with that, I think yeah, the record for New Nation is four and one. And I definitely uh, ask you guys to stay tuned for the next war because the next war is going to be extremely, extremely tense against an extremely powerful opponent. Uh, so that's going to be quite fun. But uh, meanwhile, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video and I definitely hope none of you get food poisoning because it is one of the most awful experiences that you can go through. It was so, so bad. But I'm back-ish, kind of. I'm trying to get back. Anyways, see you soon, guys. Bye.
Zidwit. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So 